Shove it, man! Shove it, squad. Today you're going to learn about how one of the wrestlers with the worst reputations of all time ended up having two of the best matches and becoming one of the hottest things in wrestling, only to return to complete mediocrity. And there are some weird moments in this video. Of course, it's Tiffany. ECW General Manager, the definition of a 2000s diva, the magazines, a blonde bombshell. But what if I told you she ended up proving that she could be more than that? Most people would look at me like I'm crazy, and I wouldn't blame you for missing everything that happened with this girl. She turned out to be something different to what we all thought. So keep watching because this won't be your standard diva story, and she certainly wasn't boring. And there's nothing worse than boring. But to understand Tiffany, we need to start at the beginning. Prior to appearing in the WWE, her looks got her a place in a certain magazine. I can't name it or even show a picture, because this video will be instantly hidden. But come on, you all know what the Hawk's talking about. That all happened at the start of 2007, but by the end of 2007, Tiffany was participating in the Diva Search. The WWE Diva Search was a particularly trashy segment which ran for a few years. It mostly involved a bunch of models with no wrestling experience doing games and promos, basically doing anything but wrestling. This was the last Diva Search that was filmed, although it mostly just aired on the WWE website. Tiffany came fourth in the competition with Eve Torres winning the show. They hired her anyway and sent her to developmental to learn how to wrestle. While she learned how to do her job, she became an on-screen character in the ECW show. She was an assistant to Teddy Long. Whilst in the position of management, she often came across as having the lights on but nobody was home. She was an airhead. Her mouth was open so much she must have caught flies on a daily. She even ended up being the full manager of ECW. And full can be taken whichever way you want. It wasn't terrible but it's not as if she was an essential part of the show. At least she made you feel happy when you looked at her. So she had that going for her. She did this for about 9 months before ECW was cancelled by the WWE. It wasn't her fault. So now she would be a wrestler. She would do a cheerleader gimmick. They teamed up with Kelly Kelly for some reason. <laughs> Tiffany got a lot of hate for her wrestling skill. I think it's a case of guilty by association with Kelly Kelly. She really didn't wrestle that many matches in the WWE and didn't have any high profile matches at all. And she only had 2 years of wrestling experience. So being friends with Kelly Kelly and a lack of any memorable in-ring moments caused her to get a bad in-ring reputation. I don't even remember her doing anything at this time, but I remember having a reputation for being horrible. On reflection, it wasn't warranted. She was harmless. She also married Drew McIntyre in May 2010 in Las Vegas. It all came to a screeching halt over the SummerSlam 2010 weekend. Now there's a few different versions of what went down here. One version is the couple had just returned from the mansion. Yeah, that mansion. Something was misunderstood that night. Basically it was all a misunderstanding and it also involved Chavo Guerrero. Drew and Chavo were exchanging pictures with Drew making comments about something he was doing in the gym. God, I'm trying so hard not to get this video demonetized for age restriction. And that something led to what went down in their hotel room. Tiffany saw their messages that they exchanged and basically beat the hell out of Drew. She beat him so badly that police were called and Tiffany was arrested. The other version is that Drew and Taryn both went to the mansion where Drew cheated on her. When they got back to the hotel it blew up and the police were called just because it was getting a bit heated. But the stories of Tiffany beating up Drew are exaggerated. She was just being too loud. The final version of events is simply that Drew bragged to Chavo about cheating and then she went for his phone and found out and flipped at him. Seeing as no one seems to know the true story it's left for us to decide. Let the Hawk know which option you're voting for. Will it be option 1 a punch to the gut, option 2 a slap to the zone, or option 3 a brick to the brain? Cast your votes now. Whichever way it really went, she was arrested and Tiffany disappeared from the WWE programming without explanation and she was released from WWE in November. She didn't tell the office about the arrest at the time which was a bad decision. She was not charged with anything in the end. Drew was also punished as he went from the chosen one to 3MB. I guess WWE didn't like the negative publicity this incident gave them. They also didn't want their wrestlers visiting the mansion in the PG era. The couple divorced a year later, so it turns out Drew McDonald wasn't the chosen one after all. The heat from the fans all went on Tiffany, even though she was potentially the one that got cheated on. And despite the fact none of us even know the truth, she was labelled as a psycho ex. She barely wrestled for the next two years, and then she slowly became more and more sour towards the WWE on Twitter, accusing them of casting couch type scenarios and stealing her ideas for storylines. Alright bro. So her wrestling career wasn't exactly going well, her reputation was tarnished, her in-ring skills were nothing more than passable, and she was known as a man beater, and a very sour one at that, for the way WWE had treated her. So it's over then. Well no, because TNA exists. I'd forgive you for forgetting that. The home for WWE outcasts over the last two decades. Some went on to show the WWE what they'd missed out on whilst others used it for one last payday. 
They threw Tiffany a lifeline. At the time in 2012, the fan reaction was a mixture of what's the point in signing her to much more extremes such as calling her the worst women's wrestler of all time. Either way, it wasn't exactly positive. At the time, the TNA knockouts division was pretty much dead. There were about six knockouts and they were crying out for some new blood. They weren't setting the world alight either. The WWE had caught up with their standards of women's wrestling by this point. But most unfortunately, the new blood seemed to be Tiffany. It didn't seem like the answer to TNA's problems. She was sent to TNA Developmental to shake off the ring rust. The highlight of her time there was a match with the stipulation that the loser would get dumped in a pool of dog feces. I guess they didn't watch the British Bulldog vs The Rock. The dog pool wasn't the only thing that stank in the arena that night. Tiffany lost but she avoided going into the pool. Probably a good thing because her career was already in the toilet. She didn't need Terry a turd in her teeth. She made her on-screen TNA debut in the summer of 2012. Oh no. Introduced by Brooke Hogan, who falls over. <laughs> she is the new knockouts referee. Because Earl Hebner kept sleeping with the wrestlers. Okay, I'm not saying anything. But why TNA thought Tiffany had the credentials to suddenly be a referee is beyond me. She was now going by her real name, Taryn Terrell. She would be a face referee who would argue with the heels when they tried to cheat. This literally went on for about six months while she continued in developmental at the same time. Everyone had the same thought. We're right about this woman, she's nothing but looks. Gail Kim was in the middle of one of her many knockout title reigns when she started to take exception to Taryn's refereeing skills. She wasn't letting Gail cheat the way she wanted to and she was costing her matches by accident. This went on for a bit with Gail slowly getting more and more frustrated with the referee as the weeks went on. Taryn eventually flipped and she attacked Gail during a match. As a punishment, she was put on a referee probation. It was done because Gail was being a dick to her. Apparently TNA referees aren't allowed to defend themselves. Brooke Hogan fired Taryn Terrell as a knockouts referee, but at the same time she hired her as a wrestler. In the TNA ring, it seemed to be more of the same from her time in WWE. Short matches that weren't very good. She wasn't doing anything wrong, but there wasn't enough here to know if she was actually good or not. Little did I know at the time, I was watching the biggest push of her career. She went on to beat Gail Kim and afterwards asked who else wanted to get physical with her. So really it just seemed like a standard diva still, looks and playing up her sex appeal. Then she beat Tara, the former Victoria, but it was just a lucky roll up and it didn't feel earned. Why were they pushing this girl who can't really do much? The knockouts division was becoming a joke. If this woman was supposed to be the saviour, it just doesn't feel earned. She's just started wrestling and now she's beating two of their top knockouts, give me a break. After another loss, Gail decided to make it much more personal as she tried to break Taryn Terrell's leg. This took her off TV as Gail was now doing the same to the other ladies. Gail announced she wanted to finish Terrell off completely and end her career at Slammiversary in a last man standing match. I know they're women, but it just doesn't feel right calling it a last knockout standing match. Shut up or I'll smack you one. How could TNA be so dumb to put this lady on pay-per-view in a huge match like that? This is going to be a brutal botch fest. She should be doing dancing or something like that, not a hardcore match like this. This was a really big deal at the time. Everyone was laughing at TNA. The idiots putting Tiffany in this sort of match on pay-per-view. I distinctly remember watching it at the time. I almost missed it because I needed a piss, but I also felt it could be so bad that it was funny. So I watched it. As you can tell, I wasn't expecting anything. And then she proved us all wrong. I don't know if there's any other examples of matches that should have been terrible, but turned out to be great. But somehow this is one of the best knockout matches of all time. No exaggeration. Let's check out the highlights. Both women starting off intense to try to smack each other's heads off. Top right missile drop kicks. Taryn Terrell kicking a steel chair of authority. A Taryn Terrell crossbody blocked by a chair shot made me sit up and think, hang on, what's happening here? The figure four around the ring pole from Gail. Taryn is screaming out in pain, but she won't quit and keeps getting up. It's intense. Then a dodge at the last second sends Gail into the chair in the corner and out of the ring. Taryn figure fours are back across the pole. Taryn Terrell tries to follow up a spear, which Gail dodges and Taryn crashes onto the ramp. She's like a banshee out of hell screaming and running as she bounces off the ramp again. Then completely out of nowhere, Taryn grabs Gail and dives off the ramp with a cutter to the floor. Everyone is in disbelief at this point. The crowd are chanting, this is awesome, at a Tiffany match. Let that sink in. She wins the match, regardless of how this match looks in 2022. In 2013, this was a brutal physical women's match. And Taryn has now earned our respect. But hold it right there. I ain't done, I ain't done, because I can sense there's still some doubters in you. TNA must have been really impressed because a month later, Gail and Terran clashed again, this time with a shot of the knockouts title on the line. It was a ladder match. These kind of matches happen pretty often nowadays with the ladies, but a mainstream company putting on a ladies ladder match in 2013, almost unheard of. Well, they pick up straight where they left off with their hard hitting stuff, and Terran must have learned something because she connects with the spear through the ropes this time onto the ramp. 
A tug of war over the ladder leaves Gale sandwiched in the corner. Terran slides the ladder into her. Gale goes down again to the running net breaker. She then gets desperate and tries a crossbody from the counter which Terran counters with a kick. Terrell gets her teeth rearranged by the ladder now and that's a lot of teeth to rearrange. Gale is unable to do the figure 4 around the post proving that our girl is definitely learning. Both girls fight on top of the ladder for the first time they end up both smashing into the top rope. I like this one here as Gale goes running and ducks under the ladder and it's shoved into her face on her return. Now we have a second ladder involved. There's still plenty of intensity and fire to this match. Gale gets the figure 4 on around the main ladder which is a good spectacle. Gail Kim is a bumping machine in this match, she's hung from the ladder and then dropped like a turd into the toilet. Terran has a chance to win but instead has a Jeff Hardy moment and chooses to dive on Gail instead from the ladder. Gail is determined and she just keeps getting up. Terran senses that she needs to do something big and tries to cut her off the ladder. It doesn't work and Gail shoves her off. Now Terran has a dragon sleeper on but at the same time Gail ties Terran's hair to the ring ropes. It causes enough delay for Gail to win the match. I'm not sure which match I preferred out of these two but they were both far above expectations. Now I can see it right now, everyone's rushing to the comment section to praise Gail Kim for bumping through that match. And she did. Terran couldn't have had this match with anyone else on the roster at the time. But you know, let's give Tiffany her dues. Before this match, people most likely doubted she could even climb a ladder. Her intensity, the hatred in the match, the willingness to put her body on the line. This has to earn your respect in 2013. And if your dance partner sucks that badly, you wouldn't have got matches rated as highly as these are. It's just not possible. TNA seemed to have discovered this woman out of nowhere. They'd somehow seen something that none of us could. She was probably the hottest woman in wrestling at this very, very, very brief point in time. She could wrestle, pass ball on the mic, take extreme bumps and she was attractive. Sounds like a potential legend in the making. She got pregnant and didn't wrestle another match for a year. <sighs> Jesus Christ, that's terrible timing. Now I know what you're all expecting and it was all downhill from here. Well, not exactly. When she returned, she was welcomed back of open arms from the fans, and Gail's arms too. They are now friends. The fans were going nuts for her return. They wanted to see more of these crazy matches. And it sounds like we'll get it too, because Taryn acknowledges that her and Gail are tied one apiece. Then TNA dropped the ball. They threw the deciding match out on free TV with no build or heat. The match was thrown out to after four minutes. Stupid TNA. She just kind of existed in TNA for a while. They didn't try to get her heat back. A small high was at the end of 2014 when she captured the knockouts title for the first time. It was a triple threat against Gail Kim and the Hamburglar. It was actually good as the former rivals had to work together to take out the much larger Hamburglar. After a hard hit match, Terran pins Gail. But then, as soon as Terran becomes the knockouts champion, TNA lost its TV deal and was unable to air any new content. You just can't make it up. Why are all her big moments followed up with a bad thing for her career? When they come back, three months later, <laughs> she was still the champion, but they were now on a bad TV network, so nobody cares anymore. Notice the downgrade in quality. Anyway, she was a fighting champion, but none of the matches would ever reach the levels of the Gail Kim series. After this, Terran Terrell became the longest reigning champion in history at the time. But as with all things Terran Terrell, as established, what goes up must come down. She renamed the title, the Knocked Up title, because she was pregnant again. I'm joking. Nothing bad actually happened. Just after this, she became a heel for the first time and formed a faction. They were called the Dollhouse because they were boring. I never really understood this gimmick. They somehow acted provocatively, but at the same time they were playing the part of little children. I don't know. I just don't understand what this was supposed to be. Some people liked it. I think it was really strange. Can someone let me know in the comments what were they going for here? Well, people always said that Taran was nuts, so I guess they were right. She lost the belt to Brooke Tessmarker, ending her title reign at 279 days because Gail Kim attacked her little friends. Terran stopped appearing in TNA and just appeared in pre-taped segments where she instructed her dollhouse faction to attack people. She also seemed like she was trying to steal Gail Kim's husband Robert Irvine for some reason. This didn't lead anywhere. The really messed up thing is that after all this, she almost came full circle as her ex-husband Drew McIntyre was now in TNA and he wrestled on the same shows as her. There were no reports of any actual trouble though. In 2016, she officially left TNA, citing she was most likely retiring from wrestling because she had found God. And God had asked her not to wrestle in such provocative attires for a company called Tits and Asses. I mean, yeah, it would be hard to buy into both those things at the same time, I completely get it. I guess she was conflicted because she kept coming back to TNA for the odd match or appearance. Nowadays, she commentates and wrestles for the NWA, a company that has asked me not to give them any attention, so I'll honour that. What a ride that was, the lowest of lows and a pretty big high in the middle. After watching all of that, I can only draw one conclusion. She's definitely nuts.
I still have no idea where those Gail Kim matches came from because she never showed that sort of willingness to put her body on the line again. I guess having a kid can change your perspective on life. And on that note... I'm sorry to do this guys, but the Hawk has to take a bit of time away from YouTube. Because... <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'd be surprised if the Hawk can even reproduce at this rate. I've watched so much TNA, I can barely spray. No, 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 cut it. I'm just kidding, ladies. The Hawk is a fine specimen of a man because... <laughs> That's all, folks.